So I'm Peter Kearns. I am the strategic account manager with Feedvisor. Prior to Feedvisor, I was with Amazon for three and a half years. I was on the seller services team. Uh, I ran the team that recruited new third-party sellers to the marketplace in the consumable space, so health and personal care, beauty, uh, baby, grocery. Basically what we did was, or what Amazon does, is looks for um, offer gaps, selection gaps, and tries to find new sellers to bring them on to fill those gaps so that Amazon can truly be the everything store. Uh, I did that for a while, and then I moved into strategic FBA, also within consumables. Um, and then my wife and I decided that we wanted to leave Seattle and move to a small town in Montana. So I left Amazon, and now I'm with Feedvisor. Uh, and it's exciting, because I get to be much more hands-on with sellers like yourselves. Um, I'm amazed at what sellers don't know about selling on Amazon, even though you are doing some significant business. And one of those is really what makes Amazon click. We're going to talk about uh, the Amazon leadership principles. Uh, we're going to talk about what the leadership principles are, which ones matter most to third-party sellers, and how they can help your business. So from the outside looking in, Amazon can be daunting. And these are words that sellers have told me. Um, sellers, friends, family. Uh, it can be daunting, intimidating, confusing, and in the words of my mom, scary. Right? So, and I'll admit, uh, while I was with Amazon, are there any former Amazonians in here other than Mr. Heller? Okay. So I'll admit, um, these are all true. When I uh, interviewed with Amazon, it was very intimidating. It's a, it's a long, lengthy process, phone screens. Uh, you submit business uh, case studies. Then you do what they call a loop. It's uh, basically six hours, six individual people. And then about a couple of days later, they all get together in a room, and they vote you on or off the Amazon island. So it's a little intimidating. Once you get there, the intimidation, all that sort of stuff kind of continues on. <laughs> but there is um, one thing that Amazon has that really gives every Amazonian uh, the ability to, to be successful, and it's the Amazon leadership principles. And just out of curiosity, how many people in here have heard of the Amazon? Wait, first, how many people in here? How many people in here are selling on Amazon? Right. I hope everyone. Now, keep your hands up. How many people of you have heard of the Amazon Leadership Principles? Can any of you recite them? Tell me how many there are. No, no problem. So first, let's start with what the Amazon Leadership Principles are not. They are not a beautiful picture with a motivational saying framed and then hung on a wall in a boardroom or a hallway. It is not. The Amazon leadership principles are 14 guiding tenets that are woven into the existence of what Amazon does. Everything that they do from the top down, from Jeff Bezos down to the low, uh, you know, part-time associate at a fulfillment center, subscribes to these Amazon principles. And in the words of Amazon, their leadership principles aren't just a pretty inspirational wall hanging. These principles work hard, just like we do. Amazonians use them every day, whether they're discussing ideas for new projects, deciding on the best solution for a customer's problem, or interviewing a candidate. And so it's important that they, as you sellers, start to understand what these are, because this is truly how Amazon functions. So what are they? Customer obsession, ownership, invent and simplify, are right a lot, hire and develop the best, insist on the highest standards, think big, bias for action, frugality, learn and be curious, earn trust, dive deep, have backbone, disagree and commit, and deliver results. 14. You can take pictures or you can just Google Amazon leadership principles. 
And you can buy the books that have been written about it. You can read the articles. Uh, these leadership principles um, could be and have been adopted by other businesses. I've seen church organizations use them. Um, they're pretty phenomenal. I call this my Amazon MBA, right? Because if you apply any one of these, or if you're able to apply all 14 of them to your business, you're going to succeed. And this is what Amazon does every day. You could be in a meeting with a VP. I could be in a meeting with Jeff Bezos, and he could say something. And if it wasn't customer obsessed, I could say I'm just having backbone disagreeing. And, and he would agree. He would say you're using the leadership principles. It's, it's that, that important, right? They're in everything that they do. So when I was with Amazon, I'm calling new sellers. I'm saying, hey, come on, sell on Amazon. I'm trying to get them to um, start and list their products. And some people would want to do it immediately because it's Amazon and they want to talk to them. And then other sellers would, eh, I don't know, I don't know. And then after a while, we would say, I'm sorry, you can't sell on Amazon. And sellers would stop and they'd say, what? And I said, you aren't showing that you have the ability to um, earn trust or uh, show a bias for action or that you're customer centric. And so we would stop the opportunity. We'd tell them they could go through self-service, they can go through it, they can do it themselves, but they're not going to get our help. And right then and there, that's where sellers start to see that Amazon's a little bit different. And so I would coach my sellers. We have these 14 leadership principles. Adopt them if you can, um, but pay attention to a few, uh, and I'll talk about those in a second. So why, as a seller, should you care about these? In the eyes of the customer, it's just Amazon, right? So I bought a product or Eric's backpack. I could say, hey, Eric, where'd you get the backpack? Most likely he'd say Amazon. He's not going to say, I bought it from a third party seller utilizing fulfillment by Amazon, <laughs> right? It's Amazon. My mom, hey, where did you get that? Oh, I got it on Amazon. She doesn't care. And neither do customers, the majority of customers. They just think it's Amazon. Why else should you care? In the eyes of Amazon, the leadership principles are everything. And if you don't follow and adopt, you will most likely lose your selling privileges. Privileges is the key word there. These are Amazon customers. They're not your customers. And if you've ever gotten any kind of warning or violation, they say it in the bottom there. There's a little email, a little line in the email that says, you know, failure to fix this could result in your selling privileges being removed. So it's important to recognize these, but there's a lot of them, right? 14, they may not all matter to you. You may not want to be a frugal company. You may want to take your profit and buy a jet, right? But if you're going to sell on Amazon, and this is what I coached my sellers on, which ones matter most? Anybody have a, take a guess? <laughs> Customer obsession, yeah, nice. Another one? Okay, I won't, I won't hold back. The three that I would coach them on, customer obsession, ownership, and insist on the highest standards. So the thing that I haven't talked about yet is that there are descriptions for each one of these leadership principles. We could spend all day going through, talking about it, uh, analyzing your business, finding areas of opportunity for you to improve your leadership principles, uh, finding areas of strength for your leadership principles. And I would talk to my sellers, and I would tell them, though, you don't have to focus on all 14, but if you don't focus on these three, you're going to have problems. So what is customer obsession? In Amazon's own words, leaders start with the customer and work backwards. They work vigorously to earn and keep customer trust. Although leaders pay attention to competitors, they obsess over customers. So what does this mean? I'll give you a great example. Over Christmas, I bought my son a little Star Wars toy. He's four and a half. Uh, and it arrived, and the back of the box had been torn open. Right? So either it was a return that got put back in, or something got damaged. And I looked in the box, and I realized all the parts were there. It's not a problem. Okay, I just taped the box back up. I mean, my son's going to open the present, rip into it, and right, he's not going to care about the box. But I wanted to make sure that Amazon was aware. So I emailed Amazon and just said, hey, heads up, I got the product. 
It just came um, damaged, just so you know. Or the box was damaged, not the product. Within about 15 minutes later, I received an email from an Amazon associate who had credited me my account to the, for the purchase. They had uh, given me the option to get another one sent overnight, uh, and then they told me to just keep the one. I could donate it or return it. So the key here is that the speed, and if you go back to the, uh, um, well, we'll talk about this one in a minute, bias for action. The speed at which they responded, how that associate responded, they didn't go and talk to a manager, they gave me, the, they, they gave me my money back, they gave me the product, right? They totally took care of me. And that's what customer session is about. Let's see it in action. So the first thing is that as a seller, I think you need to recognize that Amazon is your most important customer. Because if Amazon goes away, your business goes away. As you saw in Gilad's slides earlier, the size of which uh, Amazon is in terms of business's um, percentage, it's usually 80 to 90%, right? So if you don't treat them as your customer, you're going to lose your business. It's just like if you ran a restaurant and you have a really good customer and they're always coming in and then one night they come in and they have a little too much to drink and they break all the tables and all that stuff, they're still your best customer and you're going to bring them back, right? You've got to kind of have that relationship with Amazon. They're your best friend, but you kind of hate them at the same time. So treat them as your customer. Provide great service. Blow them away. Take what Amazon does and turn it to 11. Apologize to the customer even when they're wrong. Cynthia talked about uh, liar buyers, right? They're out there. Um, I'm from Seattle, Nordstrom's corporate office is in Seattle. There's a joke, I don't know if some of you have heard it. You could buy tires at Les Schwab, a local tire place, and return them at Nordstrom because their customer service is so good. You want to take that kind of approach. It's how Amazon grew to be what it is, 270 million active customers worldwide. Um, it's just kind of insane. It's kind of a cult-like. It's the most trusted brand in America, according to Forbes. And they started and did it through providing amazing customer service. Same thing, issue refund and or replacement product without delay. It's important, it's a $14, $15 issue, right? Maybe it's more, but credit the customer. You want to keep them happy. The next one is ownership. Leaders are owners. They think long-term and don't sacrifice long-term value for short-term results. They act on behalf of the entire company beyond just their team. They never say, that's not my job. That's not my job. I think this is one of the things that I loved the most at Amazon is that I loved taking ownership of situations, even if it was outside of my you know, role or responsibility, right? Um, but the thing that's more important is that Amazon empowers their team to do this, right? And that's where these leadership comes in. So what does it mean? What is it in action? Don't take shortcuts. Cynthia talked a little bit about that earlier, your suppliers. If all of a sudden a supplier comes along that says, I can give you the products that you've been purchasing from this supplier, but I can give it to you for half the, mouse, uh, the cost, that's a shortcut. It's probably fake, it's probably counterfeit. Don't take shortcuts in packaging, right? Um, detail page information. Own and learn from your mistakes. I've worked with a lot of sellers who have been suspended and they constantly, well, we didn't do it. Well, we didn't do it. It wasn't our fault. Well, you've been suspended. Amazon would argue otherwise. Until those sellers literally like, you know, took their coats off, rolled up their sleeves and got into their business and said, you know what, it's my fault. We didn't package it properly. Or I had an associate who was um, not paying attention to the shipping um, invoices and putting the wrong packages in. Or we weren't paying attention to the expired product state. Until you can get over the it's not my fault, you're never going to get anywhere. You've got to figure out how to own and learn from your mistakes. And that's one of Amazon's leadership principles. Or it's um, being vocally self, well it was, they've changed a little bit, but being vocally self-critical, where you're able to say, I, didn't, I made a mistake and I need to learn up from it. Amazon does that all the time. Empower your team. 
Same thing with Amazon. Doesn't matter where you are or what you do, those leadership principles apply to you. Do that for your team. If you have somebody in your warehouse who doesn't think that they have the ability to stop an order from going out because the product has been damaged, you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. You want your team to feel like they have the ability to say, you know what, these products are expired, we can't sell them. This product is damaged, we can't sell it. This pre-prep pre packaging isn't as good as it should be, we should fix it. You want them to be coming to you. You want them to feel like they're part of your team. And be proactive with communicating with seller performance and seller support. So it goes back to own and learn from your mistakes. Customer comes, writes you a report, or sends a return to you, and you can see it in that uh, low performing ASINs report. You can see that. You can then immediately contact seller support and say, hey, we reviewed this ASIN. We've decided that we're no longer going to sell it because we think that we've seen a high number of uh, returns on it. Do that before Amazon pings you. The third one that I would uh, coach my sellers on is insist on the highest standards. I think that a lot of sellers, if you've been uh, hurt or been pinged with any kind of product quality or seller performance issues, um, some people think that Amazon standards are a little too high, but Amazon puts it right here in writing. Leaders have relentlessly high standards. Many people may think these standards are unreasonably high. Leaders are continually raising the bar and drive their teams to deliver high quality products, services, and processes. This last part, I think, is really key. Leaders ensure that defects do not get sent down the line and that problems are fixed so they stay fixed. So at Amazon, has anyone ever emailed Jeff Bezos? Yeah, nice. You know what that's called? Internally, it's called a Bezos escalation, right? And they're really serious. And uh, the first one that I had was really scary. And it was an email to Jeff. It was like, dear Jeff, uh, I can't tell you how excited I was when Peter Kearns called me. Um, you know, it's the first time anyone from Amazon has called me. Uh, but then I was greatly disappointed when he never called me back. <laughs> and I've been waiting eight weeks to get a response for a UPC exemption. This was a few years ago when they offered UPC exemptions. So Jeff gets his email and he forwards it out to the senior vice president and then it waterfalls down. So it goes to the senior vice president, the VP, the director, and then finally to me. And I have to give a detailed account of everything that went wrong. So I do that. I go into my director's office. I'm like, Chris, am I going to get fired? And he says, no, no, you're not going to get fired. But you're not going to do anything this weekend except for work on the six pager that we have to deliver on Monday. And so it took a few hours, but then I realized he was dead serious. Um, what ended up happening was the seller had wanted a UPC exemption. Uh, they got put into a queue that was actually moved from one group to another, and the communication between those two groups didn't work very well. So they sat there and waited and waited and waited. And so we end up diving deep and figuring out what's going on with it. And it turns out that there were thousands of sellers that were in the same situation, right? And so we took that one email, dove into it, figured out what was wrong, and completely changed the process in which we handled that, all from that one seller emailing Jeff. So it's making sure that defects do not get sent down this line and problems are fixed so they stay fixed. And that is one that I think a lot of sellers don't focus on. What are others? Make sure your product listings are 100%. So if you are creating detail pages, make sure the dimensions are correct, the bullet points are correct, all of that sort of stuff. If you're matching to ASINs, which what a lot of sellers do, you have the ability to contribute to that detail page. You may not get it right away. Uh, you may need to contact seller support after you've made the change, but you want to continuously do that. Provide documentation if you're selling. So I'm a big watch fan, and I would look at the, the detail pages for watches. I was like, no, that's, that's the wrong movement. That's not the right watch movement in that watch. And so I would email Amazon and say, here, this is the right movement. Here's the description from the manufacturer. I would send them a link, and about 30 minutes later, that would get updated, right? So make sure you are reviewing your product listings. Ensure your team is trained on the highest quality control standards. A lot of times the issues that you have are 
in an operational level, right? They're your teams at your fulfillment centers who are pre-packaging and sending replenishment orders, or they're your team um, processing customer service. So you wanna make sure that you're continuously training them and working on them. Uh, respond to all buyer communication within 24 hours, even on the weekend. <laughs> so the great thing about Amazon is you can shop on it 24 hours, seven days a week, right? But as a seller, you can't really not work on the weekends. So if you are getting dinged for um, you know, not responding to customers, you need to figure out how to do that. Hire somebody, but make sure you're responding to customers fast. Just like I got, went back to that Amazon issue where I emailed them, it was like 11.30 at night and they responded. Amazon has a follow the sun process, so your seller support and customer service, wherever it is, you're, you know, wherever it is um, at that time of day, there's gonna be somebody in your time zone that's gonna be able to respond to you. Uh, so how can these help? Uh, first, they're gonna improve your seller performance. So your customer satisfaction metrics should be green. It's what Cynthia showed you earlier. It's this seven or eight, you know, ODR, that sort of stuff. Um, there's the perfect order percentage. If you're insisting on high standards, your perfect order percentage would be at 100%. Um, so if you are following these leadership principles, you should see, be green. It's easier to adapt and implement to new policy changes like the return dissatisfaction rate and customer service dissatisfaction rate, which are on their way, right? They're all in beta phase. Have you guys all seen those? Most people are probably red on those. It's, a, you know, it's one thing to get the, the order right. Now it's another thing to get the return right. Um, but if you are following those leadership principles, you would have taken a bias for action to learn what it means. You would have empowered your team to start making the necessary changes. So when those are enforced, which is coming, it won't be an issue. You're ahead of it. And the third thing is decreased seller performance and PQ policy violations. So seller performance and policy violations. So there's two different teams. There's seller performance and then there's a sub, sub team for um, product quality. So if you're adhering to those leadership principles, you're gonna have less time and less issues with these. How else can it help? It can give you new opportunities. What do I mean by that? Seller fulfilled prime. Anybody in here do that? Ah, one, two, do you like it? Yeah. Seller fulfilled prime means that your unit that you're selling is prime badged, but it lives and stays in your own facility. You have to pay the cost on it, but you still get the power of Prime. So customers sh uh, shop on Amazon. I don't know about you, but I, everything I shop for is I only look at the Prime eligible offers. And if it's not a Prime eligible offer, I go and look for the product from the manufacturer, right? So if it's not an FBA, why is that? Because I want it. I pay $100 a year. I want my product in two days. So does, you know, third of the rest of the U.S. households. Uh, I think by 2020, half of all U.S. households will be Prime members. So adhering to those leadership principles, it gives you the ability to participate in new opportunities. One of those is Seller Fulfilled Prime. Another one is a hazardous materials pilot. Anyone in here say uh, sell hazmat? Yeah. So hazmat, Amazon has facilities where you can send your products into FBA and they're hazardous and they live in a hazardous materials facility. If it's an aerosol, it actually gets contained in a 12 or like a six by six uh, chain link fenced cage. So if it gets punctured, it flies around and no one gets hurt, right? If it's flammable, it lives in a little cube that has a sprinkler in it. So if it catches fire, it puts it all out. So the pilot allows you to send in hazardous material products to FBA. However, you can't if you've ever had a hazardous material policy violation, meaning you knew it was hazardous, but you sent it to FBA anyway, right? You took a shortcut. The other is the subscribe and save pilot. Everyone here know what subscribe and save is? Subscribe and save is incredibly powerful, right? It is where you, as a customer, buy a product, it's something you buy all the time, cat food in my house, right? We go through a lot of cat food. And um, I got tired of always going to the store, so I just subscribed to it. It arrives on my door the fifth of every month, right? It used to be only Amazon, so only Amazon retail would allow you for uh, subscribe and save. A year ago, they started opening it up to third-party sellers, but only 
a small amount of third-party sellers because they met those performance metrics, right? So subscribe and save is huge. But if you're not hitting those numbers, if you're not driving the right metrics, you're not gonna be able to participate in it. Lightning deals, another one. It's not necessarily the same, but there are a Prime Day, remember that in July? Bigger than Christmas or whatever they were gonna say. Uh, incredibly successful though for Amazon and they'll continue to do it. But to participate, you had to have a particular metric. You had to have particular levels to be in that um, Lightning deals. So <clears throat> they allow you to tap into those new opportunities. These are the ones that I know about right now, right? What I don't know about is what's gonna happen with drone delivery. Are you gonna be eligible for that? You know, I don't know uh, about the one hour delivery that's happening in I think 17 different markets right now. Are you eligible for that? So those are the sorts of things where you're thinking, and we can go back to the slide, but it's, you know, think big. So even though you're not Amazon, but you are a seller and you're thinking big and how you're gonna be able to apply these things to your business. The other way that can help is improved business performance. Increased buy box share and or eligibility, better metrics, better buy box, more sales, pretty simple. It allows you to focus on expanding your business instead of maintaining or in some cases saving it. So you're focused on growing your business, you're not focused on writing a plan of action on how you're gonna get this ASIN reinstated because customers complained that it was fake like you saw a high number of returns, you would have just removed it immediately and been done with it, right? It's not worth it. And it's gonna increase your sales. When FBA started, there were a lot of businesses that were like, no way, I'm not gonna do FBA, I'm not gonna do FBA, I'm not gonna do FBA, and then we recruited them in and they were like, whoa, why didn't I do FBA a year ago? I saw a 1,300% increase in sales. I'm not kidding, 1,300, I've seen ASINs, the minimum 20, 25% increase in sales, right? So adhering to these leadership principles allows you to increase your sales. And that's what's most important. And with that, I thank you.